Welcome back everybody to our intermediate and advanced civil 3D training series. In the previous video we talked about uh, three and four center curves related to intersection design. We're going to take that a step further now. We're going to talk uh, more stuff about intersection design in relation to turning vehicles and the radiuses needed for some of the larger semi trucks that uh, we have on our roads today. Now, the vehicle tracking can be downloaded and installed from the Autodesk website. If your company has access to that, uh, you could probably also get it as a 30-day free trial. And the software, uh, once you get it installed, will come in the ribbon. So you'll get an additional tab in your ribbon called Vehicle Tracking. That one selected has just a, the general setup here and some of the buttons we can use. Now, in this video, we're gonna take a look at vehicle specifically turning. We're gonna do some trucks, we're gonna play with some cars and take a look at the vertical clearance as well. So we can look at a truck and see if it can drive down our road. If we have any super crazy grades on our road, it might not be able to. So to begin with, the top left of the ribbon here is where we're going to be looking. Now we have auto drives, we have manual drives, look at vertical clearance, some guided drives. The guided drives are more for railways, but uh, if you have a rail line, you can apply a train to that. Looking under the settings, and I'll click on the settings tab, and the first time you do this, it's going to load up. It's going to take possibly up to 30 seconds for it to load. And these are just the general program settings where you can set a few things up. You do have access to some of these during uh, during the running through the process as well. We're not going to take a look at all of them. I'm just going to show you that there are a few things here. The units, what do you want your drawing units to be, drawing scale. If you have a surface in your drawing for the vehicle to follow, it can do that as well. Okay, I'm going to, yeah, I'm just going to cancel this. We don't need to look at any of the settings just to know where they are. Now we can do, we can create those typical turning templates that most, if not of all of us have seen based on a 30 degree corner or a 45 degree corner or a 60 degree corner. So I'll just throw one in and we'll say there's a truck turning 90 degrees. It's going to load the vehicle database which has appeared on my other screen. And we see in the list here, we have a large number of vehicles, different countries, uh, different makes, different models, Mexico, Spain, Poland, Australia, uh, really any country that would need to worry about this. We are going to look, because I'm in Canada, we're going to look under Canadian design vehicles. Alternatively, U.S. design vehicles, uh, because the countries are so close together, could work for us. Once we expand Canadian design vehicles, we can we have four different options here. Just to take a look at some of these options, we have buses, uh, an articulated bus, a bendy bus. We have a city bus, a uh, bus with double axles, passenger cars, uh car pulling a trailer then we have the semi trucks where we start getting into wb12 15 17 21 23 uh, wb17 wb21 wb23 these are pretty standard typical semi trucks and if they would be probably 90 percent of the vehicles that i would utilize this piece of software for they are your typical trucks you see driving down the highway we have different vehicles, some heavy haulers, some platform trailers, really big, long trucks. We see that this one here is about 55 meters long. Some Transportation Association Canada, buses, cars, uh, one semi-trailer, and some more tax stuff. So uh, uh, quite a few options. And every, every country that's in the software, there are multiple options here. One thing I do want to point out also, this does also support aircraft. So if we're doing designing an airport or runways, most of the larger aircraft, bigger aircraft are 
within this software as well. So this would replace your arrow turn and your auto turn if you are utilizing those softwares. I'm going to select my WB28 or sorry WB23 for this 90 degree turn. Now I'm going to click proceed and I'm going to pay very close attention to the dialog box that pops up because this one has caught me a lot of times. Most of us will just autopilot click yes. However, what this is doing, this will set this one vehicle to default and then we'll have to go digging in the settings of the program to undefault it. So uh, I'm going to select don't ask me again and no, I do not want to default this truck. Up pops some general drawing settings. We have scale, we can follow surfaces. I don't have a, any surfaces in my drawing to follow. And if we want to modify some of the layers for the path. So I'm going to leave it all default. I'm going to hit OK. The scale thing pops up again. So one drawing unit represents one meter. Uh, if your feet or centimeters or whatever you've done your drawing in, make sure to set that up. We'll hit OK. Now in pops a picture of the truck. That's typically it would be driving straight down the road. It's not like it's going around a corner, but we can place the vehicle in. And for this, I'm going to place it over here on the left hand side just to demonstrate this. Then we can choose which way the vehicle or which direction the vehicle is traveling. So say it's driving, uh, we'll try and match the angle of this road. Say it's driving up that way. Then comes in uh, the position of the vehicle. We can modify where it's located. We can modify the angle. We can modify the angles of the trailers. So say we have different, uh, different requirements or we know the trailer is going to be bent 90 degrees. We can go ahead and modify that. We can change the speed limit that the truck is moving at as well. The slower the truck, the tighter the turn it can make. The faster the truck is going, the, the um, bigger the corner needed. So right now it's set to, I believe, five kilometers an hour. Yeah, five kilometers an hour. And if we're going back, it's two and a half kilometers an hour. So I'll just leave that as is and I'll click proceed. Again, take a look at the options that are in your drawing for what you need. Now this one will only do a 90 degree corner because I've asked it to create that 90 degree bend. And as we see, if when I move the truck along, it shows the location of the outside wheels. So we can watch the top outside and the bottom outside to make sort of this uh, macaroni shape where uh, the back wheels are more to the inside of the curve, the front wheels are more to the outside of the curve. So this would be a typical, one of those typical templates you see where you have a truck that's at 90 degrees, a truck that's at 120, a truck that's at 180, and you can utilize these to design your corners. And again, that was just the auto drive uh, bearings. We can do 30 all the way up to 180. And if I wanted to do the skin for a different truck, to see the difference between this WB23 um, and say I wanted to go WB28, this truck's about five meters longer, proceed, I could do the exact same steps. And we'll put that truck in as well. We can see that this one is uh, the, the elbow slightly bigger than the previous one. So that is just to do those quick templates. We, need, we also have a manual drive button where we can uh, manually drive the truck. So if I choose my WB23 again, now once you've used the truck, it's going to go down here a pool and it's going to show down below for a, a pool with uh, for draw um, that's based on this drawing. I'm going to choose my WB23 again and I'm going to proceed. And this I'm going to simulate driving down the road. So if we have a truck, uh, the blue here is my median and the cyan colored is the driving lane. If I have a truck driving north, this will pop up on the other screen. And I need to zoom out a bit so we can utilize the potential ribbon for that or no you can't 
I can manually drive this truck. So if I click in this driving forward window, and now if I hit over zoom, okay, if I hit over zoom out, it does that. Now this is my axis. So if I'm in the middle here, this is the truck completely stopped. Below my mouse will be the truck reversed. Above my mouse will be the truck going forward. Now this takes a little bit to get used to. The farther away from the middle I get, the faster the vehicle goes. And if I go to the left here, the truck makes a left-hand turn. However, like I said, it gets it takes a little bit to get used to. And as we see here, when I'm done, I can click. This truck can successfully make this kind of a corner. There is quite a bit of, um, there's a, 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 an angle here that makes it more difficult for a, a big truck. However, it is possible. Now, if you don't want to use this manual drive, if you want to just rely on your, your cursor, I'm going to delete those. I'll delete these as well. Under this auto drive, we can auto drive arc. Instead of choosing one of the angles, we can go to the auto drive arc. My WV23, I'm going to proceed. Now I'm going to have the truck drive, uh, we'll say down this road here. I'll try and center it as best as I can. Proceed. Now this one will go based on where your mouse is. A little bit easier than trying to drive it with uh, the cursor down below, especially if you're not going straight north. So if I drive to here and then my truck starts making a turn, I can have it do a U-turn if I wanted. I could... Uh, have it turn left. And again, don't just do one great big arc because then your truck is going to try and drive off to the right here. So picture yourself driving through an intersection about here if I was in a truck, then I would start straightening my wheels out in order to complete my turn. And I'm driving between the median and the lane here. Now trucks are a little bit uh, bigger, so they do have to make some wider turns or a shallower turn, or sorry, yeah, wider turns when they're making corners, you'll often see them pull way down into the intersection just so the back wheels do not run over any potential medians. Whereas if we go and do a car, so if I auto drive arc again with a typical passenger vehicle, passenger car, we can see that it's a lot smaller and it could easily make I, I, even a U-turn around this, uh, this median here. So mostly we don't utilize this software for passenger vehicles unless you're designing something really tight. Uh, a lot of houses in a small area, potentially you would use it. It's more for the larger vehicles, semi-trucks, tra trailers. Uh, if you Again, if you're working on on airports, you could utilize it for the runways as well, the way planes turn around. I'm just gonna open another drawing here to demonstrate the vertical clearance. All right, I've got my surface drawing here, my corridor surface, and we're gonna run this truck along uh, my profiles here. Now this will work based on any profile design lines and this is a civil 3D profile. It will also work with polylines. Um, I believe it has to be a polyline, but we're gonna just do it right off the profile here because this is my design ground. Now right now I've got my profile set to 10 times exaggerated. This cannot be exaggerated. It needs to be uh, one times vertical. It needs to be the scale that it would be in true life. And if you try and run this command with a vertical or an exaggerated profile, it's gonna warn you as well. Now at the end of my profile here, I have a three to one slope down to existing ground. And then my main portion of my road is at 0.6%. So I'm not overly worried about the 0.6%. I am however worried about the three to one slope and if a truck would get high centered when it goes over that. So I'm gonna run the vertical clearance command. And I'm gonna select uh, we'll start with the passenger car here quickly. We'll click proceed. Look through uh, the drawings. I'm going to set up my surfaces. I can project this onto my final surface if I wish. And we'll hit OK. 
Now it selects the object to analyze. This is where you select your polyline. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll work on a feature line, but it does definitely work on a profile. I'm gonna click my cyan line. It's, it, it'll come up with a warning. Do you wanna work with the default value? Uh, I'm gonna hit yes. It's going to calculate it and display it on your profile view. So here is a vehicle that's very squished and we can drive it along. And once you go forward, unfortunately, it does not let you drag it backwards. Now, the part I'm concerned about is right in here and if this car will bottom out. And it looks like this car is fine. This passenger car can make it through it. And if we look along, the rest of my road is perfectly fine all the way to the end. I could grab this one as well and move it if I wanted to. But once it's moved, you can't bring it back. Let's run the same command with a semi-truck. So I'll go vertical clearance. I am going to select my WB23 and I'll hit proceed. And again, the same warning is gonna come up. It has both the default height and ground clearances set. We can modify some of these. I'm just gonna proceed with default values. And we see that the command breaks right here because this combination is not able to make it over this three to one to a minus 0.6%. One or both of these trailers will end up getting high centered. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite tell you where. And if it runs the entire command, sometimes it runs it, sometimes it doesn't. Let's try a WB21. I'll click on that again. Yes, I'll accept defaults. And again, it stops here because as we can see here, the truck will high center itself on the road. Now, this was just a quick intro video into vehicle tracking. We went through the auto drive arcs, manual drives, and we looked at vertical clearances. Uh, the guided drives, again, are more for railways and trains. If you have a polyline, you want to apply a train along it, it will do a guided drive based on that. In the next video, we're going to take a look again into vehicle tracking, and we're going to look at the parking tools.